If you're like me, you spend most of your time imaging deep sky objects from your backyard. While I love a good dark sky trip, the reality is this is where I am the majority of the time. So what are you missing out on when you take pictures from your light polluted backyard? How much better are the images taken from a dark sky? In this video, I'm gonna show you a head to head comparison of the same nebula. One of them was captured from a dark sky site and the other one, well, I'm going to photograph it again here tonight in the backyard. Same camera, same telescope, no filter, everything is the same except the sky quality. Ash, I need to use one of your images for a video. I was thinking the one you just took in Florida. And then I'm gonna take it tonight in the backyard and see if I can get it even better. So you go cool with that? What are you barking about? So how dark is your backyard? My backyard is a Bortle Class 6. I live at the edge of town in a medium-sized city. It's light polluted, but it could be a lot worse. You can check out the light pollution map online to see where you stand, or even measure the brightness yourself using a sky quality meter. Most people I talk to that set up their telescopes in the backyard are in the Bortle 6 to 8 range. This is pretty light polluted, but there are still a lot of projects you can take on under skies like this, so don't let it get you down. If you're lucky enough to live somewhere dark, it means that you actually get to experience nighttime, and I am very jealous. A Bortle scale class four and below is where it's at. You get to see the Milky Way and a sky full of stars. If you live somewhere like this, I hope you realize how rare it is and that you're doing your part to make sure that it stays that way. Where I live, it gets brighter every year. I see more and more outdoor lights go up without any concern for what it does to everything around it. But I digress. I can use light pollution filters to get around a lot of that light pollution that surrounds me. There's a lot of great options available now, including multi-band pass narrow band filters that isolate basically all of the light you wanna collect on a nebula. This one's probably my favorite. It's a dual band pass filter made for color cameras called the Optilon L Extreme. There's a lot of these types of filters out these days, but this one's been pretty good to me. But what about when you wanna capture a more natural looking version of a target without the use of harsh filters? Shooting without any type of light pollution filter with a color camera from a city backyard is challenging, but it can be done. In fact, I prefer to capture certain targets this way and to just deal with that light pollution in the image processing phase. Tonight, I'll capture the Horsehead and Flame Nebula in Orion with a color camera and without a filter. I'll use the exact same camera and telescope setup that Ashley used to photograph this target from a dark sky site last month. I'll compare the same exposure times and a matching overall integration to truly reveal the differences in sky quality. While the object was quite a bit higher in the sky from the dark sky location, at least I have another moonless night to test. I should also note that the camera settings you use from a dark sky site are usually different from the ones you would use in a light polluted backyard. For example, you may want to shoot a shorter exposure in a bright sky to avoid blowing out the entire frame. But for comparison's sake, I'll use the dark sky settings here in the backyard and hope for the best. Okay, time to get everything ready to rock. The setup I'm using includes a William Optics Red Cap 51 refractor, the new one, and a ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro color camera. The camera and telescope are mounted on an AM3 and I'm using an ASI Air Pro to control everything. We're already into March now, so I'll have to start firing away on the Horsehead Nebula as soon as it gets dark out. Orion is setting for the season, so now is the time to finish up any projects you have in that constellation. Galaxy season is right around the corner. Whatever I collect tonight, I'll match with the dark sky data to have a true comparison. We'll compare the individual sub exposures as well as a matched total integration. Of course, I need the forecast to cooperate with me for this to all work, so wish me luck.
Okay, it's time to look at the image data and compare. We're in PixInsight here, looking at an individual sub exposure to take advantage of the handy screen transfer function tool that just gives you a quick and dirty stretch of the data. So here's my three minute sub, a single uncalibrated three minute sub, and I'll do an auto stretch to it. So, you know, that's what to, what's to be expected from the backyard, from a Bortle 6 backyard. Lots of gradients in there. The detail isn't great. Uh, it's very noisy, of course, because it's a single sub exposure, uh, no flats or anything to get rid of that dust spot. So, you know what, I've seen worse. So that's from my backyard. Now let's look at Ashley's ver version from a Bortle 3 dark sky site. It's a pretty night and day difference between those subs. So both three minutes long, Bortle 3 versus Bortle 6. So the biggest thing I notice in hers is the detail around NGC 2023 and just the dusty regions kind of below the horse head. Whereas in mine, NGC 2023, the reflection nebula below the horse head is barely there and there is just no detail and no dust below the horse head and next to the flame. So really, really eye-opening the difference of dark skies there. But this is where it gets interesting. Let's look at the stack of three hours versus three hours, Bortle 3 versus Bortle 6. So we'll start with mine. My final stack, I got three hours of image data last night. If we apply a stretch, looks a lot better than the single sub exposure. The noise is really uh, improved a lot. Uh, it's not a bad looking image. Some gradients going on there, even with the flats, um, but there just seems to be kind of a haze and color cast over the entire image. That is the telltale sign of light pollution. So drum roll, please. Let's look at Ashley's stack of three hours from a Bortle 3 site of the same object with the auto stretch. And look at that detail, the, the dusty regions, all of the other objects in the field of view uh, aside from that horse head. Um, it's a pretty eye-opening comparison. So this is the difference that dark skies provide. If you look at the difference in these two images, there is so much going on in Ashley's image in terms of just the faint dusty nebula regions. In mine, it's pretty well just the horse head and flame and some faint remnants of those reflection nebula and pretty well no dust. Uh, I could process them out a little further, but they're just totally evident in this dark sky image. So if you've never shot from a dark sky site before, this is what you're missing out on. And you know, it might be eye opening for some people that haven't shot under dark skies before and say like, how did you get that image? It's only three hours. This is how <laughs> great data is great data. So um, it's really, really important. I will say though, my image from the backyard actually isn't too bad. Three hours from a Bortle 6 light polluted backyard. Let me just rotate this here. This might be, um, you know, worth noting if you've never shot without a light pollution filter from a light polluted area. Yes, there are gradients and it's pretty washed out from the light pollution, but there's also a lot of great detail in there. And the star color is rather natural and nice. And those subtle blue tones that are tough to get with a light pollution filter are there. So it might be worth doing if you're up to the challenge of processing some of that light pollution out in the image processing stages after you capture it. While most astrophotographers already know how important dark skies are for a great image, I hope that this comparison provided some context to the idea. If you normally shoot your images from a light polluted city backyard like me, you might wanna think about traveling for certain projects to maximize your clear sky time. With spring on the way, it's a great time to make sure that your travel kit is ready for adventure. I've listed the one we used for this project in the description for you to use as a template. So good luck on your search for darker skies this year or for those making every sub count in the backyard.